Hello! What's up? It's raining. I'm still making videos for you. That's how dedicated I am. So I wanted to start a new series, Assessing Other YouTubers. So in the fitness YouTube space, there are hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of fitness YouTubers. And it can be difficult deciding who to follow. Or more importantly, who to trust. The first one is going to be Jeff Nipper. Now, Jeff is one of the biggest YouTubers. I think he has about almost 2 million followers. And he's been on YouTube for about 5 years. So for each of these YouTubers in this series, I will break it down in a few different categories. So the first one is going to be the quality of their information. Now for Jeff, I would give him... I would give him a 10, honestly. He scours the science, he reads the research, he looks at all the data, and he really gives you a clear picture in practical terms about what will be optimal for your training. He's also very transparent in his videos. So when he makes a claim, almost always there's a paper on the screen. So you can actually click on the paper and go there and see, okay, wow, this is legit and you can read the study yourself. Now, I'm sure most people don't actually read the studies. I often do. Uh, but it's good to have someone who is actually showing what they are referencing. It's not just bro science, it's real science. So, quality of content, 10. Alright, the second one is going to be the quality of their videos. So this is going to be their editing, their effects, their overall visual appeal of the videos. Uh, now, I would give Jeff probably an 8. So, for me personally, I don't really need an amazingly visual experience. I just need the information and the practical recommendations about what is optimal. But for some people, they really need a lot of, you know, amazing edits, a lot of flair. And he, he has gotten a lot better over time, but compared to some other YouTubers, the game has really gotten very, very high. Um, so for him, I, I'd say about an 8. For the record, I'd give myself a 2. So. Don't be like, you're hating on him. <laughs> I'm a two. All right, number three is gonna be their personal knowledge and their experience. So this is a little bit different from number one. Number one is about their videos. This is more about the person. Honestly, I would give Jeff a nine. I think he's competed at a high level in bodybuilding, maybe even a professional, I'm not sure. He's competed in powerlifting. He's set records there. He's been training for probably about a decade by now. He has a lot of experience working with hundreds, if not thousands, of clients. And he, he really is a professional in this field. I don't think he has a master's or a PhD, but I believe his bachelor's was somewhat related to fitness. And even if he doesn't have any credentials or, you know, certifications, you can just tell by the way he talks and the way he presents himself that he knows what he's talking about and he has the experience and the knowledge to be a credible source. Another thing that I like is he explains things so well. He's very straightforward, he's very to the point. He doesn't really waste time, which is incredibly valuable. All right, the fourth category is his physique and or natural status. So I believe that he is natural. He doesn't really show any signs of anabolic abuse. He weighs like 160 pounds. And yet, people actually accuse him of using steroids. I think this is ridiculous. I think his physique is achievable naturally, and I think he has achieved it naturally. Uh, he isn't super lean the whole year. He doesn't have like that really big, massive steroid look. And so I think he's natural. I think he has a great physique, very balanced. You can tell he has incredible genetics. He did a, uh, a video with his mom, actually, and she was actually, like, you know, pretty jacked, which um, it, I think it's pretty clear that he's natural. When you have two million subscribers and you have an impressive physique, you're gonna get the steroid accusation. It's just inevitable. One thing that he has been criticized for is his training. He actually doesn't, I'm not gonna say he doesn't train hard, but he does certainly avoid failure. He's had some injury issues, and it's understandable that he doesn't go to failure most of the time. 
uh, but this can sort of lead to criticism, and rightly so, I think, in a lot of cases. One video, he said he was an RPE-9, when, in my opinion, it was an RPE-7. Uh, but I think this is mostly just a side effect of using RPE and putting it out there publicly. If you say something is a 9 RPE, and other people think, oh, I could have gotten at least two more reps or three more reps in the same set looking like that, you're going to open yourself up to people giving you feedback. Anyway, that's pretty minor. All right, and the last category is going to be marketing. Now, I'm actually going to do this in a reverse way. If someone is marketing a lot, if they're selling a lot of products, that's actually going to be a negative score for them. Um, so Jeff is usually fairly good about this. He does have some sponsored videos, but it's not excessive. He's not, you know, mentioning products every video or every five minutes in the video like some people are. Uh, some of his videos are a little bit clickbaity. Usually he's pretty good about this, but there are a few videos where, you know, it's a little bit on the clickbait side of things. Um, but it's usually not in a very distasteful way, like some people do it. He really lets his content do the talking. He doesn't talk a big game, he just delivers very consistent, exceptional content to his viewers. So for this marketing score, I would give him an 8.5. Alright, so if you add all of those up, it's going to equal a 93 for Mr. Jeff Nippard. So in summary, he has excellent content, and he's definitely in one of the top five YouTubers to follow. Alright, that's all for the video. Make sure to like and subscribe, and if you have any other YouTubers that you want me to assess, I am happy to do so. Mm, goodbye.